said to write it in order, did it? Number seven is xy plus 2x squared y squared. Number eight is m to the fifth power. m to the fifth power. Nine, y cubed plus 3y squared. And the leading coefficient is a one. It's a one. Ten is four fifths. 11 is no, it is not a solution. 11 is no, it is not. 12, if you're making a slope intercept form there, y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. 13 max, you have what? Uh, 21 and 1 3. 4 feet. 4 feet. 14, Jordan Shaw. X equals 7. X does equal 7. X equals 7. Number 15, it has infinite amount of solutions. Infinite amount of solutions. I thought those. That would be incorrect. That would be the complete opposite of infinite amount of solutions. <coughs> we can talk about that, and I've what talked about it multiple times. 15 is infinite solutions. <laughs> Zero to I guess. Infinite means there's infinite. There's never ending solutions. 16, m equals negative 2. Negative 2. 17, Marilyn, markup is. Well, that's the new price. The markup was $5.40. Yeah, new price is $17.40. Number 18, the rate of change is 4 gallons per minute, which would also be a slope. Is that what you had, Ty? What do you have? 
I'm not sure. Which number are we on? I don't think I fully did the question. Which one? Which problem are we on? <laughs> Just wondering what problem we're on. I'm confused on all of them. Oh. Oh. I have lost oh, that one. Maybe that's why you struggle with that. Hey, you have nothing for problem number 18 written down? I didn't finish. You didn't finish? Maybe that's why you're struggling to understand what's going on. Yeah. Number 18 is four gallons per minute. I'm sorry. 19, ladies and gentlemen. Don't overthink 19. It's y minus 8 equals 3 times in parentheses x minus 2. y minus 8 in parentheses or equals 3 times in parentheses x minus 2. And number 20, yes. The common difference is 4. The next two terms are 9 and 13. Negative. What? You mean negative 4? Different difference is an assumption that is. This is where all of Tyler Hopkins' problems get resolved. Frankie! Sorry, what? 8x to the ninth, y to the third. Sam? We're gonna, yeah, let me get the answers. Do the answer first. Marilyn? 19y minus 8 equals 3 times in parentheses x minus 2. Colin. 4, 7, and 12. 7 was xy plus 2x squared y squared. 12 was y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. Victoria. Number 3, Number three was x over 4. Excluded value, x cannot be 0. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, we're good. Oh, this is not right. Whoever has messed with my stuff here, this will not be wow, done. Oh, that's that's right. Right. Zach, why did you do that? Let's try this again. Right. What's going on? There's the TV. Yeah. You people are lucky. I would have had to blame Sam Sleezer. What do I do? <laughs> you move this cart and obviously jumbles these wires. So you're doing a big poster. It's either the poster or the cart. Uh, that's true. Mr. Hodge, if this is off topic, but if uh, we win uh, our first game, do we play at Arlington or Roselle? Yes, yeah, you play at Arlington. Wait, oh, so we play one? Roselle right? and then Arlington. Yeah, Roselle. all right, let's go with Matt here. Right. Maddie Glenn. Oh, Again, 7. xy plus 2x squared y squared. 9 is y cubed plus 3y squared. And the leading coefficient is 1. Maggie? Um, what was the number 6? 6 is negative x, 1x cubed plus 3y squared plus 2x cubed y squared. Colton! Finally, a problem, ladies and gentlemen. You just do a Let's start here first. Let's do it in order. Listen. Standard form. I'm pretty sure we talked about this. When you write down a polynomial, something with many terms, standard form simply just means that you write it in descending order of exponents. Actually, it's in descending order of what do, what do we call that? Um, what was it when we added up the exponents and those called? Degrees, in descending degrees. So in standard form, why is this so large? In standard form, you have to put the y cubed first, because that's the highest degree to term. It's a degree of three, that's a degree of two. So that's got to be a pretty easy one for you to get right on the thing. You just put the highest exponent there. And the leading coefficient, coefficient is a number, and leading means the one in front. What number is in front of the y cube? Well, we don't write ones in front of it, but that's what it is. So the leading coefficient would be the one. If this would have been 2y cubed, then the leading coefficient would be 3. And that comes into play a lot with higher level math. You have to mix mess around with that leading coefficient. So that's why I think they just tried to introduce it to your young, crazy minds. Ty Hop, did that make sense there? Are you with me still? 
Kevin. No problem, Ron Tide. Nine. Okay. Nine. Sam Sleezer. Three. Show me up. Wait, I still don't understand mine. Which one? What don't you understand? What? Nine. What don't you get about it? I need some questions. Because what number's in front of the Y cube? That's why it's one. Kelly, whatever number is in the, after you put it in standard form, whatever number's in front of the first term is your leading first quotation. Which one do you say, three? Yes. You can tell her to mesmerize by that one. I'm sorry, I didn't agree with you. I thought you were supposed to be my brain. First of all, let's talk about excluded values. Anytime they ask about excluded values, that simply is you have to ask yourself what makes the denominator zero? Because you can never have a zero on the bottom of a fraction. You just have to say what what would x be? Eight times what number gives you zero? Zero. And that's what the excluded value is. You can't have a zero there because that makes the whole thing undefined. That's the excluded value part. Simplifying just means you make it a, you just cross cancel what you can. It's only two eighths reduces down to one fourth. It goes into two once into eight four times. And if you have x squared on top times an x on the bottom, one of those x's crosses off with one of those x's, so you're left with an x on top. So whether you write it as 1x over 4 or just x over 4, it's the same thing. By the way, it would be the same thing as 1 fourth x. All three of these are the exact same thing. 1 fourth x, 1x over 4, x over 4. All would be acceptable. Don't know why. I'm not the guy that invented the math. Talk to you. Mr. Albert Einstein. Who did Pythagoras? Euclidean? No, he did geometry. Jay Shaw. I didn't do seven right there, no. Is that you asking you just yeah. is that a span? Well, no, I just said it's I don't know if it's the fractions that make everybody get all bent out of shape with this, but please understand this is just distributive property. You are just taking this fraction and going to multiply it by that fraction, which means you get what on top. You get x cubed y squared over x squared y. Stop me there. If you don't get that, it's just multiplying x times that and that times that. Plus, now you do the same thing, multiply that times this, which means you get 2 x cubed y cubed over x y. Still good? And then it's just a matter of crossing out common factors on top of things on bottom. This has a, this has x squared, which is 2x's, times this, which has x cubed, which is 3x's. So two of those three on top are going to cross off and leave you with just an x. Same thing here. This is two y's, y times y, and there's one y on bottom, so one of those two y's is going to be. You're going to be left with one x and one y on top. Over here, the two is going to stay. Can't do anything with that. 1x crosses off with one of the 3x's there, leaving with an x squared. 1y crosses off with one of the 3y's there, leaving with a y squared. Who said wait? Which part, Kel? No, I'm good with that. I go well with that. Um, you want me to do this part again slower? Yeah. Like so let me rewrite out. it, Kel. Look, 2x cubed, because you're just asking questions that other people have and they just won't. You have to remember what x cubed means. It's x times x times x. So this one x crosses off with one of the three, and you're still left with an x squared, which is around x squared. Same thing here. Three y's, one of them crosses off with one of those, left with a y squared. Wait, so, so the. Oh, okay. So the two is still left, and the x squared is left, and the y squared is left. Can I put those together? I cannot because they're not like terms. Like terms have to have the same exponent in addition to the same letters. If that, were, if I were writing that in standard form, is that correct? Would that be in standard form? Oh boy. No, because this what what is the degree of this term? Greater. 
4. Why? Because you add exponents. This is a degree of? Thank you. 1 plus 1. So this technically should go in front. If I'm writing it in standard form, what would be the leading coefficient? 1. 2. If this was written in standard oh. form, this thing would have to be in front. That would be the number that's in front of everything. Maggie. Um, how do you do number 11? How do I do it, or how does somebody else do it? Yes. Oh, I don't know if you want that. Is it right here? Who say it is? There are two ways to do this one, Maggie. I'll let you pick whichever way. The first way, which I wouldn't do, but maybe you do, is. See this number, in the ordered pair, this is the x value and this is the y value, yes? Uh -huh. If you put 2 in for x and 4 in for y, will this thing work out? And you'd have to do the same thing here. You'd have to put 2 in for x and 4 in for y here and see if this one is true. I don't know if I'd do that. What we have been doing is you graph these two linear equations and if the point where they cross is 2 comma 4, then that is the answer to that. So I'm going to do it because it's not that hard. It's standard form. If I draw, if I graph this one in standard form, how do I graph it? Somebody say x, y intercept. So this one crosses x at negative 6. So here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And again, you probably want to do this not freehand, but I'm going to What's the y-intercept? Everybody on the count of three. One, two, three. 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 No, yeah. It's negative six divided by negative two is three. So boom, boom, boom. So here is this first line. The graph of the first line is this. The graph of the second line. X-intercept is, everybody? Four. four. Three times what number is 12, four. So here at one, two, three, four. <laughs> Bless you. Why intercept everybody? Six. It's just, you're just not reassuring me by like six, only three out of 25 people answering. Six. Two times what number is 12? Six. six. So here at, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. You draw a line. So the question is, is this point two comma four? It's more like one comma three. But it's actually pretty close. Was the answer yes? No. Okay, that's why you would have to, if you're going to graph this, don't freehand it like I did, because in all actuality, this is, this is awful close to two comma four, which is right there. And I might have done something stupid and not quite got it there. So if you're going to graph it, make sure you have a piece of something that you can make a right graph on and do it as accurately as you can. If you're just going to put the twos and the fours in here to see, here let me let me let me put the twos and the fours in there for you. So if I put two in for x, this is two minus what's two times y? Eight. eight. Is two minus eight negative six? Yes. Okay, so it works for that one, but it's got to work for both. So I have to put two in for x here. Three times two plus two times four. Three times two is six, right? 2 times 4 is 8. Does 6 plus 8 give me 12? No. So it doesn't work for this. That's why it is not an answer to that system of equations. What? You could. Oh, the third way you could have done this was solve, change this into x equals something, substitute it in here, and see what point you get in the end. Yeah. What? 2y? Because it's still up. 2 times 4, four is 8. No, no, up. It's four. It's, it did turn into an 8. 2 times 4 is 8. But by, by, but I did make it an 8. Don't worry, Cal. It's coming. Other ones. I guess you have your choice of three different ways to solve it if you really want. You could do multiple ways and see. Frankie? 18. Oh, I was hoping somebody would ask on number 18. Why? Why? 
that up. Mrs. Lesh? Mr. Hunt, could you spare just a minute to show Mr. Johnson how to do the bleachers? I think, well, I think uh, Mrs. Weiss is going to have them pulled out, but I can do it in case he wants to see. I'll show him about that. Come on. Anybody good? Fine. I don't know. It is. What do you want? Do you want to see that? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, problem number 18. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I do. I do. I do. I do. I don't need it. Rate of change I just I means what is the common factor between these. In other words, how do you go from each one of these? What do you do to each one of these? Times four. Times four. That is your rate of change. It's four. Yes. Wait, so if you put most of it, well, that's correct? Yeah, that's four. Well, it's four right. gallons per minute. Uh -huh. <clears throat> That and that's what rate of change is. It's the it's the difference between x over the difference of y. Okay. What do you do? Twenty four minus twelve is twelve, right? Six minus three is. You divide twelve by two, you get. Change. Change. Right now, What's going to be our next one? Sure. Maddie Glenn, what's our next one? Number one. I said Mr. Johnson. I thought it was going to be a Oh, that's too many people. That's too many which one? Number one, children. Number one, number one. Ron is running a car for five days. He can spend at the most. The key words here. Addie Clark is the word at the most. If you see the word at the most, you don't just get one answer because that, that leaves it open for a whole bunch of different answers, which should make you think what? Inequalities. Inequalities. You know, if I said your age, if Kelly, if I said your age is at the most 14, what could your age be? 13, 12, it could be a bunch of different answers, and that's the same thing here. The most it could be. Okay, what inequality sign is at the most? If something is at the most, it has to be less. Just like Kelly, if your age is 14, Colin shouted out 13, blah blah blah, it has to be less than, right? Or equal to. If I said Kelly's age was at the most 14, could she be 14? Yes. So if that's where the equal to is. So you know this is going to be the sign that's going to come up in this thing here. You're renting a car for five days. You can spend $200. That's what it equals. That's the most I can have. There's a deposit fee of $50, which means what? Max, what's a deposit fee? Wasn't a deposit like when you get like money from the thing? Well, well, like, like, well if, you, if you're renting something, though, a deposit means you have to pay that right off of that. Like a security deposit, a safety deposit. And then I'm renting a car for five days. How much, what is the cost per day of the car? Yeah. You don't know. So that is your estimate. Well, that's your X. Five times what number, when you add 50 to it, is at the most 200. What can he spend at the most per day? So you just solve this like an equation. Subtract 50, subtract 50, you get 150. Divide by 5, divide by 5. So he can spend, x has to be at the most $30 per day. Which is just x equals $30 because they asked you what the most you can spend was, which would be $30. You asked me on this? I didn't, I mean, I got the answer right, but I didn't do all that. I just. You don't have to. 200 minus 50 and then I divided by 5. Well, that's what I did. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't know I needed to see all that. You know, 
Well, you don't need to write that down if you can do that, but as long as you can do that for every problem, you're okay. Clark? Number 13. I love 13. Keywords here would be and Q. What is a Q? All sides are equal. You've got a cube whose volume is 64. Now, usually when we do volume, we do length times width times height. But for a cube, you wouldn't do that. Why not? When you put an L, a W, and an H, that means you're thinking those are all different numbers. Well, if it's a cube, they're all the same. So we usually just put side, side, and side. Side times side times side equals 64. What number times itself three times gives you 64? Which is nothing more than, really, in reality, it is the cube root of 64. Hmm, cube. What number times itself four, three times gives you 64? And it's not 64 divided by 2. And it's not 64 divided by 3. It is what number times itself three times gives you 64? Zach, there's no way to do this but by trial and error. I could try 1 times 1 times 1. That doesn't seem right, right? Because that would be 1. I could do 2 times 2 times 2. That would be 8. I could do 3 times 3 times 3. That would be 27. I could do 4 times 4 and 4. That would be 16, 16 times 4 is 64. So the length, every side would have to be 4, whatever that is. Inches, feet, feet, feet. Somebody's ah, always asking me about slope, point, slope. Oh, we're getting back. That's really easy. Kelly, uh, which, is which number is point slope? Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, if you miss the point slope one, I can't believe that you actually. Now oh, that's slope it's intercept. We will do 12. I'll do 19 first, though. I'm on 12. This is what you need to write on your notes, ladies and gentlemen. We only did this like a little bit, and it doesn't come up a lot, but it does come up. Uh, point slope form is this. It is y minus, is it y2 minus y1? What is, what's it say on that little piece? Somebody have their note paper off. Are we looking at the slope? No, I just want to, what is it? Is it y minus x? It's y minus y sub 1. This is what you have written on your paper. This is the, the, the generic form of point slope form. Just like y equals mxb is the generic form of slope intercept form, and ax plus by equals c is the standard form. I'm speaking mostly to myself here, I think. Okay, you, look, they give you the slope, that's a letter m. They give you an x point. It goes there. They give you a y point that goes there. That's all you need to do is substitute that in, and that is the formula. Period. That's all you need to do. So if you have this written down, you've got the answer. Now, the one thing, the place that I would caution you on is this. You, when you do this, you very much probably need to put parentheses in for this because... Everybody gets confused as to whether this stays a minus or becomes a plus. So if you do this, it, it clears that up. Y minus what Y is, which is 8, equals 3 times X minus what X sub 1 is. And X sub 1 is 2. So right there, is this going to change signs? No, it's going to be Y minus 8. This is going to be X minus 2. The answer looks like this. Y minus 8 equals 3 times x minus 2. Yes, you need to keep those parentheses for this one. For this that would be your answer. If you have this written down, I can't conceive of how you could possibly miss this problem. That's the x, po x point, that's the y point. That's the 
Now we're going to do number 12 because it's all on the same line. So you don't graph anything? No, does it say to graph? No. Nope. No graph involved. 12 says write the equation of the graph line and slope intercept form. Well, that was point slope form. Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. You just, the other form, the AY plus standard B. form? Standard form is ax plus by equals c. But we don't have, I don't think they asked you for standard, do they? You just need to figure out what the slope of that line is and the letter B. What is the letter B where it crosses the Y axis? That's probably the easiest thing. Here's your thing. What is this point right here? One. That's where it crosses the Y axis. So you put the plus one there. Probably the hardest thing is figuring out what the slope is. How do you find the slope? Well, you find two points where it crosses the thing. You make your right triangle. How high is that triangle? One. How wide is that triangle? Two. Is that my answer? What's wrong with my answer, ladies and gentlemen? Conrad, what's wrong with my answer? It's negative slope. Going downhill from left to right means a negative slope. So this has to be negative. If it would have gone uphill like this, it would be positive. You wouldn't have to worry about it. This is your answer. Whew. This is more fun than people should be allowed to have. Okay, Sean? Oh yeah, 15. Let's talk about that. We've talked about these multiple times as well, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you did not know. What was that? Oh. Oh, no, it's so bad. Wait, no, no, we got to play. No, we ended up doing that out. It was so bad. Well, it had to been. Without COVID, it wasn't that bad. Oh, yeah. All right, look here. Distributive property here, you get positive 10x, negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. Now, it's at this point you could see you've got the same exact thing on both left and right side, but let's not talk about that. Let's just do it the way we do. I move my x's to this side, I subtract 10, I subtract 10, I get 0 x's. Now, when that happens, one of two things is going to happen. Your answer is either going to be no solution or it's going to be infinite amount of solutions. It all depends on what you get on the other side. If I get a number over here, it's no solution because zero times no number gives you something other than zero. If I get a zero over here, which I do, and you ask yourself, zero times what gives you zero? You could put any number there because zero times anything is zero. That's why it's infinite solutions. If it would have been zero x equals eight, you can't do that because zero times any number gives you zero. You can never get an eight. That's why this is no solution. This is infinite solutions. Zero times anything gives you zero. Zero times Anything gives you zero, so you can't get anything. So no solution. There is a big difference there. That was exciting. What do you think, Colton? Okay. Colin Bosak. Seventeen. Seventeen. What is this? What? How hard is this? You did your little percent thing. This is a marked up percent. So it's the original price goes on top, plus the markup equals the final price. This is the percent. This is the actual number. Did you set it up like that? No. Oh. If it's a markup, you need to do it like this. You can have your own way of doing it, but don't ask me how to figure that out. My original percent is always 100. I marked it up 45%. So my final, when I add those together, I am paying 145% of what it would be. The store 
gets the things for twelve dollars, what is the markup they want you to figure out both of these? Well, those are already on the back. Well, let's look at it. Let's do the let's do the hundred <laughs> over forty five equals twelve dollars over what number? Easy way to do this, I don't know. I can reduce this, right? Five goes into both of those? Yes. Twenty over nine. Nine. Is that the best we can do? It looks like it. So don't be sad. Sometimes life slaps you in the face. You're gonna have to do this out. Twenty times n has to equal nine times twelve, which is one oh eight. Divide by 20, divide by 20. I'm just going to do the math rather than reduce it just so you can see. You take 108, divide it by 20. That goes in five times, God bless you. No, well, there's a decimal there. Bring down to zero. 5.40, which is $5.40 markup. That's really cool, but if it's a markup, then what if it go up? Yeah. So then you add these two together for your new price, which is seventeen forty. Comment parlez-vous? Parlez-vous français? Je ne parle pas anglais. Je suis. Oh, number. Um, I just have a question for the test. On number 10, are we allowed to use the things in the back like that we can draw it out? Or do we have to draw it out on paper? What is number 10? It's the term which well, Can we use like the graphing thing in the back? What the graphing test? thing in the back? You know like the um, laminated thing with the graph? I want you to use a graph paper. Okay. Just use a homework. Use a homework piece of paper. That way you can staple it on that so you can do it wrong. I don't want you to staple that on my paper. What do you mean you don't Oh, number 10? Yeah, number 10. I would just do the slope part. Yeah, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It just looks like this. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 3 minus 7 is a negative 4 on top. Negative 2 minus 3 is a negative 5 on the bottom. I'm hoping 4 fifths was the answer. Was it? Yeah. You could graph it and count all the squares, but up to you. I would definitely get a piece of something straight with the colt and draw. <laughs> You should play Clinging the Life. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, if you got this one wrong, please know this is probably where Sam. Some of you might be able to actually figure this out without doing it this way. That's up to you, but this is the way this needs to be done if you don't. Okay, this is, again, cross products. You need to multiply the two diagonals and set them equal to each other. Just know that when you multiply 5 times x plus 2, this needs to be put in parentheses. That's one quantity. 5 times x plus 2 equals 3 times 15. You end up with 5x plus 10 equals 3x, I'm sorry, equals 45. Let's just multiply that out. Subtract your 10, subtract your 10, so 5x equals 35, and x equals 7. How fast that was. Warp speed, down to the home stretch. Where does the x go? Which oh, x? No, the x goes there. <clears throat> Hi Hops, are we are we getting back to the not so confused anymore? Maybe you'd be less confused if you sat closer to the board. Like laser like focus. What do we got, Ty Hop? Uh, five. Number five. Uh, 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 uh. So are we two and four on the pad? Yes, you are speaking. Oh yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if this gives you trouble, 
I would just write it out. You have this third power. You're taking three of these times themselves. 2x cubed y times another 2x cubed y times another 2x cubed y. That's what 2x cubed y to the third power is. Then it's just a matter of figuring out how many x's and y's and whatever. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. If you have x times x times x and then another x times x times x for your x cubes, how many total x's are getting multiplied together there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. x to the ninth power. 1y times another y times another y is y to the third power. If you don't, if you can think about it this way, okay, 2 to the third power is 8. And when you have exponents, two exponents, they get multiplied. 3 times 3 is the 9, and 3 times 1 is the 3. Model. Some people get confused when you do it that way. I would suggest if you get in all trouble, you think about it this way. Max, what's your thoughts? I don't know why they put negative 1 here, by the way. That confuses me. Because you have negative 3. Well, I know, but it, we never put ones in front. Whether it's positive or negative, you don't put ones in front of numbers. Can we do this one on here? Yeah. So this one, this is, there's no multiplication here, people. This is all adding and subtracting. There's no parentheses. You're not doing anything there. So you're just combining like terms. Are there any other x cubed terms? No, that's a y squared. That's got a bunch of garbage there. Here's another x cubed term. If I have two x cubes and I take three of those x cubed away, um, in the whole 1x cubed. Again, I don't know why the book put it as negative 1x cubed. We don't put one in front of the numbers. Is there another y squared term? There is not. So it just stays 3y squared. Is there another x cubed y squared term? Yep, this is x cubed y squared. You have four of them. You're taking two of them away. So you're left with two of them. Well, the exponents don't change because you're not multiplying them. What would be the leading coefficient of that? It is 2. Because this is a degree of 5 should be put in first. It can't be that time. I got time for one more. Rachel Dixon! 16. Everybody loves number 16. Oh, yeah. So, Rach, you're looking to get 7 equals negative 5 m minus 3. I'm looking to get m by itself, right? So, what's the first thing I do? Add 3. Add 3. Do the opposite. And what is 7 plus 3? Yeah. And then to get m by itself. Now, I? Divide. 5. More than the 5? The negative 5. Because you want to make that positive. And 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. Wait, what do you, what's another 3? No, it's negative. I added 3. Did the opposite, Kel. There might be time for one more. Kelly? Uh, I, don't, I didn't know the answer to number 20. But you want the answer or do you want me to do it? Let me look at it. By the way, what's the difference between arithmetic? Because if it's not arithmetic, it might be geometric. Arithmetic sequences are by adding and subtracting. If it asks you about a geometric one, that's by multiplying or dividing. And since this one, what do you do? Each one of these to go to the next one, you add four. That's why it's arithmetic. And the next two terms would be 5 plus 4 and 9 plus 4. Can we write the next term? If yes, find the common difference, which is 4. Don't let the word difference fool you. It's not always. Ooh. Take my stove.